How do you take chocolate and turn it into a train? What really inspired me was the trains that kind of, you know, built the, the United States what they are today. And I really looked at those early steam locomotives because they just have so many unique moving parts. Every piece of this is made out of chocolate. After doing sculptures for so many different years, I kind of have a good guesstimate of how much I'm going to use. I called up one of my vendors, Valrona Chocolate. I ended up getting about 2,000 pounds of chocolate and the final overall of the train is about 1,600 pounds. Okay, this is gonna be big. In all the years that I've been in pastry, I've never been part of a project like this. So it's really cool to see from paper to chocolate. It starts with an idea. Once I get my idea, then I start to think, okay, well, what do I want this to look like? First, I start with my drawings, and I kind of look at the way the rails are laid out and what the spacing looks like. Then I try to figure out how am I going to take that and how I'm going to scale it up to the size that I want this to be overall. Then I start to think about how am I going to create my mold? How am I going to translate what's in my head to the chocolate? There is a lot of math involved with this as well. I kind of figure out what the overall length and scale of what my train's going to be, and then I take my drawings and I kind of come up with an equation to figure out how much I need to scale it up to get it as true to form to what it is from the drawing. You pretty much have to stay one step ahead of Chef Josh and anticipate what he's going to be doing so that you're there at the right spot, at the right time, ready to glue or spray or whatever. <laughs> There's different techniques that I use with the chocolate. Some of it's being cast with chocolate that's already been tempered and I create forms with my molds. Some of it I use a food processor where it's grinding the chocolate up almost to a paste kind of like Play-Doh or clay. And I use that to kind of use my hands to really kind of get it in there and work it the way I want it to be. And then I let it set and I come back and I can carve the chocolate and add more detail. You have to work fast. It's very important that the chocolate is the same temperature on what you're gluing and what you're gluing it to. So they fuse together well. Once it's together, then you want to cool it down quickly so it stays in place and you can move on to something else. <laughs> You know, putting the little rivets on there just to make it look like it's been welded together. Adding a little texture with a brush, a roller, to make it look like wrought iron. And then when it really comes to life, spraying it with the colored cocoa butters to really bring it to life to make it look like, oh wow, look, it's got white wall tires and it's, you know, oh, it's got a little shimmer there, it's got a little metallic there. It just brings it to life. long hours, a lot of work, but it's just very satisfactory to see it to completion. It worked out better than I could imagine. Every year I want to keep the tradition alive by adding more to the train, you know, maybe doing something a little bit different, but add on to the display to create something new for our guests to come and see every year and like, oh, look what they added this year. Oh, look at that. And hey, maybe, maybe even go for the record one day. We'll see. <laughs>